Hey, what's going on, guys? It's the Short Sports Show. I'm your host, Daniel Short. Today is Monday, April 7th, 2014. And today, it starts a crazy day. We got the national championship game with college basketball between Kentucky and UConn. Who would have thought we would have Kentucky and UConn in the national championship game? Maybe back, back in the day. Back in the day, we probably would have had that. But in this year's March Madness, in this year's bracket, I'm, I mean, unless you're just a diehard fan, no one had Kentucky or UConn making it. It's crazy. Uh, but we also have a lot of college teams closing up spring practice uh, this week and next week. And the free agency saga continues, this time with running back Chris Johnson. Where will he, where will he go? We'll discuss that. A uh, quick thing I wanted to talk about, uh, just a little reminder, FYI type thing, is that the Short Sports Show will now only be on Mondays. It will no longer be on Fridays uh, due to scheduling issues. I will now only make this on Mondays. Um, until probably we'll go back Monday, Fridays, back when football season actually starts, back when the regular season uh, comes back. We'll start, you know, doing the same things where we talk about what to watch for, um, our picks that we do. And then, you know, with Monday's episode being the recap and what happened and also Monday Night Football, that sort of stuff. We'll go back to that in the fall. But as of now, it will be only on Mondays. It'll still be on Spreaker.com, iHeartRadio, YouTube, all that good stuff. Um, but as of, as for now, until NFL season starts, we will only be on Mondays. Um, but let's talk about some college football news. We actually have a good amount to talk about uh, about college football, which we haven't had in a while. Mainly is because it's because spring practice is basically now over with for majority of the teams, if not closing out uh, this week. Um, but really good news. Um, this has nothing to do with spring practice, but it has something to do with college football. And that's former Georgia and LSU quarterbacks Aaron Murray and Zach Medenberg will throw in their respective pro days, both toward their ACLs last season. And uh, I, I wanted to talk about them because Aaron Murray and Zach Medenberg, I really believe that if these ACL injuries never happen to them, these guys could easily be talked about in the first round um, with competition with Johnny Manziel, Blake Bortles, Teddy Bridgewater. I believe Aaron Murray and Zach Medenberg are both better than Blake Bortles. Uh, maybe close with Teddy Bridgewater. I think Johnny Manziel does still have that edge over both of them. Um, but I really believe Aaron Murray and Zach Medenberg can both be quarterbacks that they're both going to get drafted late, which it's because of their injury. Aaron Murray sadly has more injury issues than Zach does. Aaron Murray's torn his ACL, I believe, twice. Has other injuries um, that he suffered before. But both of these quarterbacks show that they can win. Um, they show poise in the pocket. I, I like the way Zach Benenberg stands in the pocket, the way he's able to deliver the ball, especially this season. Um, I, I mean, that was mainly when he played against TCU to open up the season. And the way he was just able just to stay in that pocket and just feel so relaxed and, and be able to just make the throws that he did, and, and, and especially throughout the season, getting better and better. I mean, he showed why he could be a top quarterback. Um, so, sadly, again, suffered an ACL injury, torn ACL, and took him out. Aaron Murray, on the other hand, um, you know, did struggle in some of the big games for Georgia. Couldn't really get over that hump, but overall was a very successful quarterback in college football, especially for Georgia, and, and shows that he also can make the throws, NFL throws, that he can um, obviously take the hits. Um, but I really feel comfortable in both of these quarterbacks getting the job done. And I compare them, and, and, and stick with me when I say this, I compare them to a Russell Wilson. And when I say that is... Not that they'll go win Super Bowls in the NFL. Not that they'll have that impressive record that Russell Wilson already now has in just this young career. Um, more that they're drafted late. People aren't really talking about them, but they have the talent to become starters in the NFL. I, I believe both of these quarterbacks, if they fit into the right system, can make the NFL and, and become a starting quarterback in the NFL. I like both of these over Blake Bortles. I, I, I'm a huge disagreement with Blake Bortles. I don't believe he's an NFL quarterback. I believe Aaron Murray can is is he's a quarterback minded. You know he he can make the throws. He's smart. He has a football IQ. Zach Mettenberger does as well. And, and I believe they're you know they're the guys that study the game and, and make themselves better. Um, so <clears throat> excuse me. I really believe these guys have a bright future ahead of them. And I, you know wherever they go in the draft, it's going to be a steal. Um, but you know I know there's some worries about Aaron Murray with that torn ACL and the injury pass for him. Zach Medenberg having really one great season um, that was taken away by an injury. How can he progress? Can he get better? I mean, he played his offensive coordinator at LSU was a former NFL offensive coordinator. So he's fit in that system. He knows how the NFL can work. And both of them obviously playing at SEC. It helps him out a little bit more, but um, it's awesome that, the, that both of these guys will be able to participate in the pro days and, and do everything that they need to do to rise their draft stock and show why they can be top quarterbacks.
But moving on, we do have a lot of injury news. And that usually happens because of scrimmages, the spring games. You know, that's finally when they get some contact going. And you'll have injuries that happen. And there's tons more, but these are, you know, some bigger names and guys that could have impacts uh, for their teams. And at first, we'll start off with South Carolina starting tight end. Rory Anderson will miss the rest of spring and maybe most of the season after injuring his triceps during his scrimmage Saturday. Uh, they don't know if it's torn, but there is a possibility. They're, they're going to check on it more. And if it is torn, it means his timetable return will, you know, it's going to extend because of the injury. Uh, he did have 17 catches for 235 yards last season. Oklahoma tight end, former quarterback, Blake Bell, the belldozer. Well, there's a weak belldozer right now. Uh, he suffered a knee sprain and will miss the rest of the spring practice. Should be good to go, though, by fall camp, which is good news for Oklahoma. Uh, Miami quarterback uh, Ryan Williams tore his ACL. He was, most, he was likely going to be the starter for the Hurricanes this season, but there is no timetable for his return. Uh, also, Alabama quarterback, cornerback Eddie Johnson, Eddie Jackson has a torn ACL and will miss remainder of spring. He can medical redshirt if he misses a season. At last season, as a true freshman, he had 19 tackles, an interception, and two fumble recoveries. And Nick Saban had believed um, had a lot of hype for this kid. Had uh, um, you know that Eddie Jackson showed a lot of potential. Apparently, he was um, really showing that he was uh, the most consistent cornerback, uh, the most consistent DB uh, for the um, for the Tide this season of the spring, and huge loss for them. Also, Missouri defensive tackle Matt Hotch will have surgery to repa repair a broken ankle. He had 41 tackles, four tackles for loss, and three sacks last season. And uh, bad news for Texas A&M, and it seems like every week, every Monday, we have an episode, which is now going to be consistent now. Uh, Texas A&M is having someone get arrested. I don't know how many times we've talked about this from a different player, but it's happened again. Texas A&M is quickly turning into a place for athletes to just get arrested. This time, uh, freshman wide receiver Ricky Seals Jr., actually is going to be a sophomore this season, uh, was arrested early Sunday, yesterday morning on a charge of disorderly conduct, was taken into custody on a misdemeanor charge, and later released after posting a $445 bond. Unbelievable. Texas A&M, what is going on? If I'm an athletic director, um, there, there's got to be something that these guys have to do because this is getting ridiculous. It seems like we're always talking about Texas A&M. Now that there's no more Johnny Manziel, let's just talk about everybody getting arrested. Now, I know it's college. A lot of teams have players get arrested. Most of the time, we don't hear about it. But it seems like Texas A&M, that name just, that school name just keeps popping up of, of who's getting arrested. And it's always a really good player, too. That's the bad part. It's always a really good player that we're hearing gets arrested. Um, but, and they didn't really say, they said it was an indefinite suspension for Ricky Seals Jones. Um, so we'll just have to see. But he's a really good player, has a lot of potential. And a and is going to look more into the investigation to see what's exactly going on and how, what they should do. But uh, that's it for college football news. A lot more than what there has been in the past few weeks, actually for the past like two months now. Um, but we should get, actually it might start dying down until we get to fall camp. So that, <sighs> that's bad news. But the good news is, is that there's 31 more days in exactly a month, basically, if you want to look at it, till the 2014 NFL Draft. Everything we've been waiting for, Johnny Manziel, where he's going to go, Jadavion Clowney, is he going to get drafted number one, uh, you know, so on and so forth, people trading up, who's going to be the top, you know, whatever, where's your team, who are they going to pick, who are my San Diego Chargers going to pick, I don't know, I really don't know right now, but anyways, that's really good news that there's 31 more days to the NFL draft, we've been waiting so, so long, but we can do this, we're sticking together. We'll make this happen. Uh, some NFL news. Seahawks and Broncos head coaches Pete Carroll and John Fox both received three-year extensions with their respective teams. Obviously, the, Bron uh, the Seahawks winning the Super Bowl over the Broncos. Oh, man. What a game that was. Um, and one thing that happened over the weekend that I really was so excited for and really wanted to talk about was the New Orleans Saints signed former Denver Broncos cornerback Champ Bailey to a two-year deal. Um, that deal will have a maximum value of $7 million. Now, we've seen these past other deals with Ben Tate. Um, gosh, who else? We've seen others that we talked about that had that quote maximum value. That means up towards, uh, you know, and this time it's seven million for Champ Bailey. And and I don't know if you guys have looked, but it shows how much, even though it says up to seven million, but really realistically, how much they're really making, and it's so little. Uh, and especially for Champ Bailey, seven million two years. It looks like it, I mean that's incentive based. We'll see how Champ Bailey can play throughout the season if he stays healthy. If he even makes close to that much amount of money. Um, but really, I, I'm not a Saints fan, but if I am a Saints fan, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for the signing of Champ Bailey. Uh, and, and this is what Saints GM Mickey Loomis had to say about signing Bailey, saying, quote, We are excited to be able to add a future Hall of Famer player 
to the with the addition of Champ Bailey, his career accomplishments mirror that of his high character, and he's very prideful and competitive player who we believe will add to our defense. Having spent time with him recently and in, in, in our discussions with him, uh, I know that he's thrilled to be joining the New Orleans Saints and starting a new chapter in his professional life. Um, and also, this is what Champ Bailey had to say, saying, quote, Last year was one of those years that I just couldn't get over the fact of being hurt and the grind and grind my way through that. It was a tough up and down year. I'm still hungry. I've got that drive to go out there and be the best that I can be, that, and that's why I'm still putting them on. Uh, and the Saints gave me an opportunity. I'm going to try to be a part of something special. End quote. And really, you know, I still see Champ Bailey, even though this is, you know, um, gosh, how, how long has he been in the league? Did I read that he was in the league for 15 years? Uh, man, I don't want to just say that, and it wasn't. It, it might be. I know he had 52 interceptions. Either way, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong on that. But anyways, I still believe Champ Bailey still has it. Still has it. And, and, and what I believe makes Champ Bailey still an elite defensive back, whether he stays at cornerback or they move him to safety or whatever they, the Saints decide to do with him. Uh, though he doesn't have that, may not have that speed that he once had when he was younger, his thought process is what makes him, his thought process is better than any defensive back in the NFL. Better than Richard Sherman's, better than uh, Akeem Tlaib, better than Darrell Rivas, better than anybody right now in the NFL. His thought process. I didn't say he was the best cornerback or best defensive back. I said his thought process is better than any defensive back in the NFL. Mainly that beca- that, that's because of experience. The, the things that he's gone through already in the NFL, uh, the players he's played against, the, the teaching that he's learned and being able to teach back to the younger players. Champ Bailey is... That, that's what I believe makes him so strong in this game and, and why he still has a chance to be a factor on the field. He may not be you know, that shutdown cornerback that he once was, um, but the thought of a wide receiver, imagine you being a wide receiver no matter who you are and knowing that Champ Bailey's going to be covering you. you know, you're thinking, okay, this is still Champ Bailey. You don't think, oh, this is old Champ Bailey that has dust coming out of his cleats. No, you're thinking of Champ Bailey, the guy that has 52 interceptions, the guy that's shut down so many wide receivers in his NFL career. That's the thought process you still have. Um, and, and I just think the way he's able to evaluate the game, as, as, a, as a, not only as a defensive player, but overall, is, is what still makes him an elite defensive back and what, gives, what makes wide receivers give him respect and knowing that they're not going to just be able to just run past this guy. Now, I know uh, in that AFC championship game or AFC divisional game uh, against the Baltimore Ravens two years ago, you got beat twice. I know, I know, I know. I remember that. But I'm just saying, you know, I don't know. I feel like Champ Bailey can can be somewhat of a factor for the Saints this season. Um, this is what Champ Bailey had to say, and, and it really went, uh, you know, I was really happy to see it was the same thing. It said, quote, I have a, lo- I have a little more to my game, I believe, especially mentally. I can see things a lot easier. I have a, a lot of things come up that I've ex- had experience with that only helps your game. I'm using that to my advantage as much as, much as possible, end quote. And it really has to because he knows he doesn't have that speed anymore. He knows that he's not as agile as he used to be. I mean, that's just it's common sense. But it's mentality. It's, it's what he has experienced, what he's gone through, what he knows. And, you know, that's what makes him a better cornerback. And, I, and also... Uh, what I think will also help him is the signings of safety Jarius Bird uh, with the Saints. That's going to help him. Um, also, the young talent at corner at cornerback for the, the Saints with Keenan Lewis, Corey White, and Patrick Robinson. Uh, Bailey can teach them a lot more to get them better. And, and they were pretty solid last season as a, as a unit. Um, so it, it's going to be interesting to see what Champ Bailey can do for the Saints. And I really believe he can, he can be a factor. Now, I'm not saying he's going to go out and have eight interceptions and a few sacks and a, a couple tackles here and there. Um, no, it, it's just that, you know, stats n- may not come up for him this season, but the way he's able to affect the game and affect offenses is what makes him a factor. And, and it's, again, it's mentality. It's, it's uh, his thought process. It's all of that is what makes him a better cornerback. And that's what I believe. But let me, let, let me know what you guys think, uh, in the comment section, because uh, I believe we all have respect for Champ Bailey and know what he can do, and, and he might shock a lot of people. I hope he does. I hope he does. Uh, but moving on, the free agency saga continues. This time it's with running back Chris Johnson. Uh, he's the next big-name player that is now a free agent. The Titans released the running back after six seasons with the team. Uh, he rushed over 1,000 yards each season, including the 2,000-yard season rushing season in 2009 in just his second season, his second year in the NFL. Incredible. Um, where do you think Chris Johnson will sign? Do you think he'll sign with the Jets, the Patriots, Cowboys, Panthers? Those are just a list of teams that I decided to throw out there. I know the Jets were a team that really did come up 
uh, in that name. Uh, a team that I just thought about, what about the Dolphins? I know they got Lamar Miller. Uh, I actually know they, used to, they shine no Sean Moreno. Never mind. I was going to say they really haven't had like a speed guy since Reggie Bush. And what if Chris Johnson could be that? But I just forgot, uh, or I just now remember, no Sean Moreno just signed with the team. Um, you know, I, I really, the reports that I've seen, I really can't tell where Chris Johnson is going to go. Uh, I know the Jets are the, the most common team. It seems like they're up for anybody. They didn't get Deshaun Jackson. And reports were saying if they can't get Deshaun Jackson, they would go after Chris Johnson. Well, you know, that's what happened. So let's see if the Jets do it. Um, you know, and, and it seems like the Jets are the most open team that will actually go out and sign Chris Johnson. Panthers, you know, I just threw him out there. I don't know. I mean, they need some more offensive weapons. I know they have D'Angelo Williams, but he's getting older as well. Uh, Jonathan Stewart, is he even there anymore? He could be, you know, out. Chris Johnson could help. I don't know. Uh, Cowboys, that was a team that did come up um, that I saw in a report that they would be interested. But looking at it now, I really don't understand why the Cowboys would be. And this is why. I know Cowboys need help overall. They need help at almost every position. But DeMarco Murray, if he stays healthy, one of the best running backs in the NFL. One of, of, underline of. Let's, let's not get an argument here. Uh, also, but their backups are pretty solid. I like uh, Joseph Randall. He is, uh, I believe, it has star written on him. I, I think he can really show that he could be a top running back. Um, not one, of, not an elite running back, but a really good running back. Um, you know, and that could happen if Demarco Murray injures his ankle again. You know, we could see Randall getting a lot more playing time. I think he's better than Lance Dunbar. That's another backup running back for the Cowboys. You, you put Randall in there, and he gets more time. That offensive line improves a little bit. Uh, play calling hopefully improves for the Cowboys. We can see Randall step up. I, I think that's a one-shoe punch right there with Murray and Randall uh, that I wish the Cowboys would use more. Lance Dunbar, he's also a, you know, a talented running back. He's that power running back, the third down type guy. Um, so really, Chris Johnson going to the Cowboys would not make any sense because, you know, yeah, he has, you know, it's still Chris Johnson. You know, we, we can see he's still a good running back. But, you know, why not save the money? Because Randall and, and, and Dunbar are probably cheaper than just Chris Johnson alone. So why not have three really good running backs or three, two really good running backs and, and a solid running back instead of releasing two running backs and having two, you know, who, who knows? The injury could happen. Um, I know the Titans were saying that they were worried about Chris Johnson's work ethic. Um, you know, that could be an issue. Patriots, I threw that out there because losing LeGarrette Blunt, um, Stephen Ridley fumbling every now and then, almost probably every now, well, actually always happening. Um, Chris Johnson could bring something to the table as a Darren Sproles type player that the Patriots really never have had. So I, I think the Patriots should look at that. You know, Chris Johnson needs to realize if he did go there that they're not going to run the ball a whole lot because obviously Tom Brady is there. You know, that's that's their offense. And if he can fit into that offense, learn that offense, um, you know, it could be pretty interesting what Chris Johnson and Tom Brady can do together. Um, you know, Chris Johnson, I guess, would be the Danny Woodhead um, type player for, for the Patriots that they've been missing, obviously. So those are a few teams. I'm sure there's more teams that I really didn't say. Um, you know, the Broncos, they're all in it to win it. So why not throw a little bit more cash and say, if Monty Ball can't get the job done, no, Sean Moreno's no longer here. I don't know any, is, is Hillman still there? Ronnie Hillman, is he still there? If, you know, you don't see those two guys getting it done, why not bring Chris Johnson in and see what he can do in that offense? With, but also got to realize, you know, Peyton Manning being there, same thing with the Patriots. Um, so, I mean, there's options for Chris Johnson. I think he can fit in with almost any team. He's got to realize that your playing time is going to be significantly short um, with a lot of the teams. Excuse me. Um, but with the Jets, they look like they're the major player in this right now. I, I think the Giants were thrown out there, but I don't know if the Giants, they, I don't know if they're really going to spend any money. Um, but the Jets could be the team where Chris Johnson goes to. But where do you guys think Chris Johnson goes? Let me know in the comments section. And I really want to know because uh, all I see is just the Jets. And I really hope he doesn't go to the Jets. I don't, I don't not much of a Jets fan. Um, quick Quick little news, the former Detroit Lions wide receiver Nate Burleson signed with the Cleveland Browns to a one-year deal. Burleson had 39 passes, uh, 39 catches, I don't know why it says 39 passes, catches for 461 yards and a touchdown in nine games for the Lions last season. Uh, he missed games, I don't know if guys, people, y'all remember, uh, he missed games because he was in his car and apparently pizza, he had ordered pizza and it was sliding, and that was a lot more important than focusing on the road. And since the pizza slid, he looked at it and crashed and broke his arm or something like that. I, I don't know. But if he can play the way Nate Burleson shows that he can play, the Browns having him as a wide receiver, that could, that, you know, that's a solid pickup right there. Um, with Josh Gordon being there, could look pretty good for the Cleveland Browns, depending on who the quarterback is. Uh, former Philadelphia Eagles wide receiver Jason Avant is visiting the Carolina Panthers today. And I really hope the Panthers sign him because, because obviously they lost 
most of their wide receivers already. And Avant, you know, he, he's he's that guy that in the crunch time that you need him to get that third and seven, that third and ten, maybe third and eleven, and you just hit him with a quick out route, and he, he's catching it for a first down. Uh, so that can really help, you know, his learning experiences, being a veteran, could help the younger wide receivers that Carolina Panthers may have. Um, and teaching, you know, Cam Newton a few things because Avant's been with McNabb, he's been with Vic, uh, Nick Foles, obviously, a few other quarterbacks probably. Could help him out. Uh, former Colts cornerback Casus Vaughn, I hope I said his name right, will visit the Detroit Lions today as well. Um, one thing I thought about, it just popped in my mind because we were talking about the Carolina Panthers. What if, I'm just throwing this out there, what if the Carolina Panthers trade their first round draft pick, if they even have one, I don't, I don't know if they do, trade whatever pick they have, their first pick that they have, to the St. Louis Rams, and obviously throw something else in there, for that second overall pick, and they select Sammy Watkins. Sammy Watkins with Cam Newton. I think you just improved your offense with just that one player alone right there. That would be pretty interesting. I like that. I, I'm already getting hype about that. Cam Newton to Sammy Watkins. That sounds beautiful enough right there. Uh, I doubt seeing that happening, but hey, you never know. Maybe maybe Panthers straight up with someone else and get Sammy Watkins. Uh, that could be pretty interesting. Or maybe Jadavion Clowney. What if Clowney becomes that next Julius Peppers that the Panthers haven't had since, well, Julius Peppers? Who knows? Uh, but that's it for the NFL news. That's it for today. Um, I'm sure there'll be some other news right after this show's over. It always seems like there's breaking news. Chris Johnson will probably sign with, like, the Browns or something, and, and we're just like, whoa. Um, but the last thing we'll talk about is college basketball. It ends tonight. It is the national championship game. Who do you have? Who do you got to win this game? That is Kentucky versus UConn tonight. Um I think it was like 6, 6 p.m. Central. I, I really don't know. But Kentucky, UConn, who do you have? Did you even have them in your bracket making it this far? I'm sure a lot of people didn't. And if you did, you're either a Kentucky fan or a UConn fan or you're just a flat-out liar because I don't think anybody had them making it to the national championship game. But if you did, God bless you. That's awesome. Uh, but this is going to be an interesting game. Kentucky, UConn, wow. Wow. I, I'm In this game, I don't know who I'm rooting for. Um, I mean, I, I like Randall from Kentucky. As a Julius Randall, I, I like him, the freshman. Um you know, hopefully he stays another year at Kentucky, see what they can do. But I doubt I think he goes to the NFL. Or, excuse me, the NFL. Yeah, right. The NBA. <laughs> we were just talking about Joseph Randall, Cowboys running back. Anyways. Um, but UConn, you know, they're that, I feel like they're the Cinderella story this year. Uh, and I like their head coach. So I want UConn to win, but I believe Kentucky will get the job done. I'm going to go ahead and say the score of 76-81. Randall scoring 20-plus points, a few assists, a few rebounds, and four steals. I'm just going to throw random stats out there. Uh, I think Kentucky does win, but I am going for UConn, and that's not covering me, you know, trying to cover cover me up or something, saying that oh, you you know, you're saying this team, but you're hoping this team wins. No, no, it's just more of just I hope UConn win, wins. I'll be upset if Kentucky wins, but I think Kentucky gets the job done. But uh, who do you got? Who who do you have winning this game? I, I want to know. Uh, see people's reactions on that. But uh, that's it for today's show. We will see you next Monday. Again, no more Fridays, only Mondays. Next Monday morning, follow me on Twitter at short underscore sports 24-7. Link is in the description. Become a fan on Facebook, the Short Sports Show. Like the page while you are there to catch up on sport news all across the country. All different types of news and sports and everything. Link is in the description as well. If you're listening on YouTube, iHeartRadio, Spreaker.com. Thank you so much. Leave a like while you're there. Share it to let all your friends and family know about this show. Spread the word. Spread the love. And uh, I will see you guys next Monday. We will talk about a whole lot of stuff because it, it seems like we're going to have a lot more stuff to talk about since it's all just in one show. So we'll see how it goes. I will see you guys Monday morning. Thank you so much for listening. God first, God bless. I'm out.